Hello, my name is Malik Carrington, and welcome to another episode of The Family Budget Fisherman. Before we get started with uh, what's in my back here, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share this video. My hope is that there are others like you and I who are interested in multi-species fishing, that we're not wedded to one particular style of fishing or one particular fish um, that we uh, that we like to fish for, and they may be interested in uh, how we do our setups and how we prepare our tackle, etc. My hope is that you know they would be willing to join us. So please take the time to do those three things. Please like, subscribe, and share this video in hopes that there be some others who would be interested. Now let's get time to get into the goodies here. This is my fishing bag and it has everything I need to do all the fishing that I'm interested in. And like I have said in times past, I fish for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, spotted bass, striped bass, bluegill, shell crackers, catfish, um, the American shad, uh, what else? Crappie, but of course. Uh, I fish for just about everything except primary, specifically for two particular fish. I don't necessarily fish for carp, and I don't necessarily fish for, uh, for sturgeon. And for carp, just because, you know, I've never really been interested in, in carp uh, with the kind of equipment that I like to fish for, although I have caught a lot of carp in times past on my equipment. And uh, sturgeon, I, it's a particular style of fishing that at least at this point in, in my hobby, uh, desires, I've, I've chosen not to fish for that particular species. Uh, however, um, for those of you who might prepare your tackle bags to, you know, to include those fish, I look forward to seeing any comments or any suggestions you might have in the comments below. Maybe we can all um, have a conversation on how to prepare a bag that may include those, not necessarily for me, but for other people who may be watching. And I'll be willing to share that information. So let's get right into it. So as I've told you before, I prepare for multi-species fishing and I have here one, two, three, four, five, plus I think there are eight bags on the inside here. And I, this bag, I can take with me anywhere. I can take it on a boat. I can fish the front of the boat, the back of the boat. Uh, I can fish on any bank situation, whether I'm on a dock, or whether I'm on a grass bank or whether I'm on a cement, on a bridge, it doesn't matter. Uh, whether I'm fishing at nighttime, whether I'm fishing in the hot of, of the day or rain or wind, it doesn't matter. This bag is prepared for everything. And you'll see. Um, so let's go ahead on and open them up. We're going to start off with the back here. And carry. A, body, a bottle of Procure Scent, and then another bottle of um, Fish Attractant. This is um, made by, oh, what is this gentleman's name? This is made by, this is called OG Garlic, the world's strongest fix, Fish Attractant. Um, M A M A. Amazing, amazing fish bait and tackle. This is the name of it. I picked it up at our, when we had our annual Sportsman's Expo, and this is a guy with his own private formula. And I tried, I tried it out. It's, it's actually pretty good. It, it, it's not as thick as the Procure, but it does work. It really does work. You can actually wipe off your lure and still have the smell there which is really interesting. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by this company, so I'm sharing with you generally what my, what my specific interest is there. Also, all right, so we have a box here. This box has flukes, it has swim baits, and uh, different types of, uh, like a fluke worm, as it were. I'm gonna open this up, up here and kind of show you what's in it. So I can show you there, there's some fluke. Here's a fluke, here's a small swim bait right here. 
another style of a swim bait here. Here's another style of swim bait. He doesn't have any eyes anymore, but that's because I've done well with him. Here's a tiny bluegill swim bait right here. And then here's some larger ones right here. You get the picture here. Another style of a swim bait here. And yes, a little bit of crinkle there. Um, but it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Here's here's a hollow body right here. Now, these of course you can use for large mouth, small mouth. Um, you can use them for all the bass categories, including striped bass. But if you put some scent on them, sometimes you can hit those catfish. Uh, I'll have to show you some pictures at some point of me catching um, catching catfish on artificial baits. It's a very fun experience. Here's another one. This one right here. Now this has a lot of different types of baits here for primarily for crappie. Now I want to let you know, for example, this is a three inch bait here. That's a three inch bait. Okay. Three inch curly tail. Now, as you know, a three inch curly tail can catch a really good sized crappie and a really good sized bass. But of course it can catch all those other species. And on uh, occasions you can even get a good size uh, uh, bluegill with them. Now, and then of course, you have some, you know, two inch paddle tails right in there, two inch paddle tail baits that are in there. Um, I got some, some two inch tube baits in there. If you can see that two inch tubes and I have them a dark color, also a two inch tube right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, other types of, you know, all white curly tails. I have double, double, uh, twin tails. Okay, now, and you could probably see right off the, off the box, oh, here's an interesting little design there. And this is a fish catching bait there, and I have different colors of that. I even have a, a sweet beaver imitation, tiny sweet beaver imitation. It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty good there. Now, you may wonder already, wow, he, he's mixed up a lot of his, Lures. Well, you can do that without having much bleed if you match the colors correctly. Here's another one. Let's go to this side here real quick. <clears throat> now, here is a four inch bait, four inch bait there. And this four inch bait actually is good for, of course, the bass categories, but it's also good for your, uh, for it, when I say bass, I'm also including striped bass, even though technically they're not the same fish. Just indulge me for the, for the purposes of this video. But this right here is really good it, along with say this color right here. These colors are really good when I'm going after salmon and, and trout, really good colors for some good sized salmon and trout. And then of course I have other kinds of curly tails there. There's another one there. Um, here's one with a clear tail, nice curly tail there. And then of course some twin tails. Here's a example of a twin tail right there. Here's another, uh, do I have any more curly uh, twin tails? I even have some, my, some of the purple ones. As you can see here, this, I can tear this real quick. So you can see it's kind of a, kind of a drop shot curly tail there. Pretty interesting deal there. Um, and all of these, just about all of these baits I have caught fish on already. And because of where I fish, I can catch really good fish in, in a lot of these um, areas. Big fish in a lot of these areas. Um, some you can look on my channel and see most of those places that I've caught those fish are not in big water at all. They're not in big water. They're in small water. Okay. So I want to show you, here's some more right here. This is a combination of swim baits and some curly tails.
Take a look at that puppy right there. See that right there? I got a bunch of these. And I have them in different sizes. Here's a very, here's a really small one right here. Really small one right there. I mean, it's hard to see, but it's, <laughs> is there. And so I have them in different colors. I got them in pink. I got them in white with the chartreuse tail and white without. Those are really good. And then, of course, I got some that look kind of like this that work really well. And the beauty of these is that I have them in the two and a half and the three inch versions. Um, here is a two inch um, tube jig, two inch curly tail, more two inch curly tails here, as you can see there. So I have a good amount of these. Here's a nice little white and chartreuse right there. And that's in this tackle box, bag box right here. There you go, right? Next, make sure that's closed. Let's see. Next, I have this one right here. This one's not as full as some of the others, but nevertheless, it's got some interesting lures in there, different colors and so forth more of those swim bait styles that, that I really enjoy. But this box is also going to introduce some of my crawls, my smaller crawls. I do have some of the crawls in the other boxes, but these crawls right here are really, really good and they work really well. Um, I've gotten some of, some of these right here. These work really good. They're all over the place. I even got some small crawls. Let me see if we could do a small crawl right there. And then I even have, again, some of the small sweet beaver looking baits, which um, have been really good for crappie. Then I got these nice little swim baits. They got little wings on them. I got a bunch of those right there that have been real good. So I wanted to share that with you. So those are my 3600s that are on the outside. Now I got some of my bigger 3700s that are on the inside. They are these are my bladed baits here, and you'll be real impressed with the bladed baits. So I open up my bladed baits. And there, you can see my bladed baits along, <laughs> there's my face there, my bladed baits along with my frogs and some of my uh, submersible frogs, of course. And I got different colors of those. Then uh, my topwater frogs, as you can see there, topwater frogs. And then, because of the room, um, bladed baits, which would, would include, of course, that um, my willow tail, I mean my, my willow leaf, uh, spinner baits, and in the sexy shad color, which happens to be my favorite color for, for spinner baits and for different type of bla baits. Here's a sexy shad uh, for a jig style bait here. And, um, and I have different kinds, of course. I have the darker ones. Got the darker ones as well. So I got a little bit of everything there. Then, of course, my top water bait, my top water, my buzzies, buzz baits there. There's a black one. Here's a white one. Here's a small one. You see? Different styles there. And then, of course, my chatter baits. Chatter baits, and of course, it's got a twin tail grub. And I got different colors of the chatterbaits. Here's a, here's a darker color chatterbait. Different darker color with a twin with a curly tail grub on it. As you can see, I used some of those grubs that I showed you in the other box 
curly tails and twin uh, tw tails, and I use those as trailers. Then, of course, I even have some of the smaller ones. I have recently invested in a lot of the smaller uh, beetle spin, spinner bait style baits because lately I've been catching a lot of 23 and 24 ounce stripers, striped bass with these. Um, so, I mean, that's a good size striped bass. And then, of course, uh, I catch plenty of crappie with these and cr plenty of largemouth, smallmouth. Well, not necessarily smallmouth, but um, largemouth and, and spotted bass. I'm sure I can catch some smallmouth. There's actually a place here in Sacramento uh, where there's a, it's a stream uh, that's not very deep. It's only about six or seven feet deep, has a clay bottom. And when the water is up high, there, there's this uh, group of, of um, I thought they were hybrids, but they're not. But they're, they are smallmouth, and they're some of the hardest fighting fish in that particular air, stretch of water. And they love those right there. Of course, I got some of my spoon baits um, and then my inline spinners. As you can see, you can use these for, uh, for your trout and for your, and for your salmon, as well as use them for your bass and the other uh, uh, fish that, that you would go after. Then, of course, I even have small inline spinners. I still use those. How many times have you seen a person on any of these fishing channels go back and use some of these? There's a Panther Martin right there. Who's using it? Who's throwing a Panther Martin these days? I am, and you'll see me. Uh, there, some of these videos are going to be me, be me out on the water actually fishing, and I'm going to show you that I use all of these baits. I don't just carry a bunch of tackle for posterity's sake. It doesn't make any sense to spend this kind of money in tackle and then you don't use it the way you should be using it. So, oh yeah, I don't know why this is not closing all of a sudden. There we go. And that's another thing. Don't try not to over, over, oh Lord, it's this right here. You know what? Instead of me dealing with that right now, I'm going to set you to the side over here, and I'll deal with you later. Okay. Here is, you know, I'm going to deal with this one last. Okay, now, worm box. My worm box. This one has straight tails and curly tails. Uh, some curly tails, as you know, the... By now, I love curly tails. Here's a longer one. That's about a seven incher right there. But you will see me throw straight tails on a regular basis. There, there's a five incher right there. My favorite color again is the old sexy shad color. And this is a triple color, a hand pour bait. And there, I even have a section for these. So this is a combination of robo worms and some of their competitors there. There you go. Beautiful white baits right there. There you go. Look at that Ned rig. It, I was already throwing that Ned rig um, and it works excellently. Here's another one right here. And sometimes I throw them like Ned rig, sometimes I don't. Here's another one right there. And that one has a twin tail. I got a bunch of those with the twin tail. They work excellently. Again, big, gigantic curly tails. Then I got some straight tails. Triple hand pours right there. And some of those can also be used for trailers. Then I got, every. I think every tackle box needs to have some Senkos. There's some Senkos right there, but then check this puppy out right there. Boom, look at how big that Senko is. This bad boy is about eight inches. This is about five inches right here. And here's another one, a six incher one. Now, again, you gotta make sure that you put these in colors that kind of complement each other. Here's a six inch, here's a five inch right there. Make sure the colors complement so that you, you don't have problems with colors bleeding onto themselves. Here's a um, different color curly tail. Here's another, here's a straight tail, can be thrown as a drop shot or a Ned rig or a Nico rig. Oh yeah, 
here, this right here. I remember one time my cousin and I were out throwing these and we caught more catfish when we were throwing for bass in this one particular day throwing. These are these hardhead style uh, curly tail jig um, worms and we did fantastically out there on that using that bait. So that's my worm box right there. Okay. Now next is Here's another uh, small bait box. As you can see here, it's a small bait box right there. And that small bait box has, you might not be able to see this. Let me see if I can even put it on the white background. But it's a white sweet beaver. <laughs> yep, got those in. And I got some bigger ones. Kind of a different style, but sweet beaver style nevertheless. Curly tubes. Um, I mean, not curly tubes. That was weird to say curly tubes. Tube jigs. That was strange. Uh, here's some curly, curly uh, tail jigs here. Even got one set up. as Got this one set up as a beetle spin in here. Got a lot of these in different colors. Of course, another curly tail. More tubes. As you can probably see, I'm I, I kind of open. Here is a... Uh, Cricket style bait there with the little wings. Got a lot of marabou hair jigs, chartreuse, white, black, yellow, as you can see there. And then this corner right here, all this right here, are all of my flies. Because every now and then, I throw flies on my spinning equipment. I remember once I was out fishing with my dad, and while out there, we watched a we watched a fish go after go after a dead well it was a bunch of fish go after what we thought was a dead fish there's another fly right here and what they were really doing was they were underneath the dead fish and they were going after the bees and the flies that were on top and they would jump up and grab the bees and the flies that were on top of this dead fish and i thought wow how harrowing would that be so um, I made sure I had a few flies and we caught some of those. They were mostly bluegill and some small bass, but they were catching them and I was right on their tail with them and we caught a few keepers. There's a little topwater frog right there that tends to work bet good in, in some instances. And then we have some, uh, some creature style baits that are crappie style. And like I said, in every one of these instances that I have these, oh, there's another... Um, Sweet beaver style bait there. In every single instance here, you'll have you'll know. I catch. I don't know what I'm going to catch when I throw into a particular area. All I know is that I'm set up for any style that comes to me. If you notice as well, most of my baits are set up as if I'm going to fish for crappie and for bass. But I think I shared this in the last video. If you set up for crappie and bass, and maybe striper, striped bass, you can cover the gamut for almost every style of fish that you can. Uh, you might need a few flies for fishing for, um, like I said, I was fishing for uh, bluegill and some of the smaller uh, bass and so forth. But obviously, you can go with salmon and you can go with trout with those flies. Some of those flies were for striped bass and some were for your, you know, if you want to fish in a small brook. Now, here is a box that I have here. It's got a little bit of a combination. It's got mostly tube jigs, big tube jigs. And these big tube jigs, can be, you can use these, of course, for all the species I've, I've mentioned earlier. But you got some big sweet beavers in here. And then you got some traditional crawdad imitations in here. And then, of course, some of these are even set up like for trailers, almost exclusively. But, of course, I got different styles of tube jigs here. Here's another one. Here's a white one. And then I got one set up. This actually still has a hook in it. Um, salt and pepper, which does really well. I remember one time throwing uh, the smaller salt and pepper that I have here. 
throwing these, thinking that I, I was going in there catching bass, and I started catching these big two-pound uh, uh, crappie, and it was an amazing thing. And my dad and I spent the afternoon catching these big crappie with those bass jigs, or so-called bass jigs. There's some uh, curly, uh, purple curly, um, purple curly, purple tube. That's about a three and a half or I think four inch bait right there. I think it's three, three, seven, five, but don't quote me on it. Here's another two and a quarter inch bait right there. And it's got two colors on it. It's like a bluish color and then a green. Here's a trailer. This this trailer is primarily used for the chatterbait, but I put it in here because it kind of matches. Seems like it goes well. Here's a five-inch tube uh, jig right here that can murder bass in certain areas, and then the black and white ones. So as you can see, that's kind of what this box is here. Here's another one. And this is primarily, exclusively, uh, crawdad, crawdad uh, uh, jigs or crawdad baits. Now, as, you mem as I mentioned to you, there was an overflow of some of the crawdad baits, sweet beavers and the crawdad imitations, just because I was just using space. But here is all of my crawdads that I'm going to take with me. Okay. Now. And of course, I've got the big ones. Some of these are familiar to you. You may have used a good number of these. Um, here's another one that I love to use. And then we got some smaller ones here. Creature baits. Some more small, uh, some more um, some more well this is a, another a style of a of a crawdad but you can actually cut this down and use it as a trailer if you wanted to here's another style of a crawdad another sweet beaver style bait another one kind of a cross section between the aforementioned um, here's another one right here as you can see, I even have a section here for the white ones that can also be used as trailers. So that's my crawdad box. Oh. Sometimes you got to be careful. Some of these crawdads are, pr are rigged already with hooks in them, and sometimes they don't lay right in the box, and you got to kind of readjust to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. Next, we have Hard Bait Central. Now, you may look at this from here, for example, or here, and go, wow, he has a, just a few of the hard baits. I do. I only have, I don't have as many hard baits or hard bait boxes as I do all the others. And there's a reason for that. The number one reason is because I don't throw as many, as, I don't throw as many hard baits as I do plastics and and that's just simply because of where I fish unlike most people most of I'd say 70 percent of my fishing is in back sloughs in small bodies of water where there's a lot of cover I mean a lot of wood a lot of rock and most of the time the cover is as such that I have to get in on top of those fish as opposed to cast on those fish. Now, if you see in my hard baits, I have almost, let's say maybe a third of this box are topwater baits because while I can get on top of cover, I can't always get down into cover with, say, throwing the shallow diver, even the shallow diver right here. You know, but I do have them. And I have them for that specific purpose of being able to get into that water. Here's another shallow diver right here. Um, here's a square bill right here. I can get in there. And then I have some lipless crankbaits right here. There are plenty of those. I got here. Here's another one. You hear me shaking them because if you know anything about tackle boxes, they all love to lock together. Here's another 
lipless crankbaits. Then I got some that dive a little bit deeper. This one right here can take you down to 10 feet easy. So I do have a few. Um, I got some wide body ones, wide body shallow divers. And then um, I've even got, well, you probably haven't seen this in a while. How many people you know still rock the crawdad? Hmm? You don't see that on very many fishing channels, I promise you. Here's something I do want to show you that I have, um, that I haven't seen most people um, show, even though this is one of, this is a newer bait. This is uh, Rapala or Rapala, however you pronounce it, their new ripstop bait. And I'm going to tell you, this is deadly in the water. Okay, so uh, hula poppers, boy, talk about a, a, a lure from another time, huh? And then some of my... Some of my favorite topwater baits. Um, what I th this is what I, when I'm hunting, I'll throw these uh, the the spook, the different types of spooks. Uh, so here's a small one, and then of course here is a larger one right there. Love throwing these baits, especially when I'm doing uh, searching for stuff. So as you can see, while I don't have as many of those as I do others. Um, I do have a good number of them because my goal, of course, is, is to, my goal, of course, is to cover water uh, based upon what I see and where I fish most of the time. Now, if I'm going to fish, I live in an area uh, in Northern California, Sacramento's close enough to uh, lakes like Clear Lake where I can get out and throw some of these and I mean, I can rip them and throw them forever. <laughs> you pr probably see me on the background trying to get this thing loose. Uh, because some of these, uh, like I want to show you this particular one here, where it's, I had to change the hooks. You see the hooks are red. That doesn't come with, with this bait here. I had to change the hooks because the hooks that they came with weren't as sturdy as these here. Uh, but I can get this down to a certain depth. Like I said, I can fish these in open water when I'm going to uh, when I'm going to Clear Lake or when certain areas of the California Delta, where I can actually cast out and not have to worry. But the Delta has as many places that have heavy cover as it does places uh, where their water is wide open. So uh, I do go after those. So yeah, so I have I I don't have as many. As a matter of fact, that's my only box of hard baits. I may add another box of hard baits, but it depends on how the 2019 season goes. Okay. Now, here's another box that has some more. There's more smaller bait. It's uh, more plastic baits. And as you can see, lots and lots and lots of crappie bait. Okay. And the reason why, again, is when I get into areas where I like to fish, I'm fishing heavy cover. You see that little curly tail there? Um, here is a, another style of a, a cricket situation. And of course, these pinks, and reds, and stuff like that, I can also use those. They double from crappie to salmon to trout uh, and, and, and even the American shad. Of course, I have the black versions of them right here. So there's this whole entire box here full of different styles of smaller baits. Most of these are under two inches. And that was because when I first started my uh, tackle collection many years ago, uh, that was what was mostly available and that was what was successful. And then as I got used to catching some of the bigger fish on a regular basis, I then upgrade it. So now, I, in general, there are very rare exceptions, but in general, I do not go, I don't purchase lures that are shorter than two inches long because I'm actually, I'm looking for bigger fish, I'm not looking for fish that, you know, baby fish. I'm looking for some big ones. Uh, my biggest, my biggest crappie still stands at four pounds. Uh, what is it, what, four pounds, four ounces, four pounds, two ounces, something like that. 
My largest bass is still sitting at over 10 pounds. Um, my largest bluegill is still sitting at about a pound and a half. Uh, so, you know, my largest striper is 23 pounds. Uh, my largest uh, catfish is also 23 pounds. And I've got the pictures on, on my YouTube page, so you can take a look at them yourself. So, at any rate, this is my terminal tackle box. And as you can see, it has something that you don't often see in most tackle boxes, bobbers. That's the old rocket bobber there. No, rocket bobber's not a sponsor, but I love their bobbers. I actually got one set up on a rod over, over here because I had used it just recently. But I got bobbers in here for me, for the kids. Um, and we got different styles of hooks. I even have my underspins in here. I got a couple different styles of underspins, as you can see there, different, different styles there. I might need to do this so you can see the different styles different styles of underspins and then I have this unique style scrounger scrounger head and then I even have something that I got from people who like to fish for walleye this is kind of a spoon st style of a hook here which is really interesting then of course I have my more traditional bass hooks. I always carry my bigger striper or bigger fish hooks in here as well. Um, my crappie, all my crappie jigs are in here. As you can see, my crappie jigs. I have different styles of crappie jigs. Believe it or not, even though that's a big, big jig head right there. It's primarily for crappie because sometimes when I go use a, the three inch or the two and a half inch uh, uh, plastic baits, I need a longer shank hook. And this is still a one sixteenth ounce, but it's a longer shank. Sometimes I'll use it, go with a short shank. And let me see if I can find one real quick. Sometimes I'll go with a very short, short shank but a heavier one. So when I'm fishing the standard tubes or standard curly tails or what have you, I'm going to go with a short shank, but with a heavier, heavier weight on it. Um, I'll even do this sometimes. Sometimes I'll use uh, uh, hooks outside of their category. Sometimes I'll throw, for example, this is a Ned Rig hook made by Berkeley, which is their answer to the Z-Man products as well. Sometimes I'll throw this in the same way that I'll just throw a, a standard jig head. And the reason why is because I love the way these fall. So different styles that are in here. Of course, I got some of my thick cover baits in here as well. If I can pull this out, this is for heavy cover. If I'm going to be flipping heavy cover, you need those there, these style hooks. I even have some very fun looking hooks uh, like these wide gaps with weights on them. And then I have the, uh, let's see, most, a lot of you like the drop shot. Well, I don't always tie. I do have traditional drop shot hooks and I'll show you momentarily, but I've got these interesting looking drop shot hooks like that there. Let me tell you those tie on faster than the other style that we normally are familiar with. And then, of course, my weights. Got all that stuff in here. I even have, uh, if, if I want to add a kind of a, a beetle spin style to my, to my baits, I can use that there. Let me see if I can hold this up this way so you can see it. You can see that there. So I have those styles there. Uh, so I have a lot of interesting styles. And the, again, the purpose of this is so that I can go anywhere I need to go, fish any condition as I assess that condition, and not have to borrow from anyone who's with me and have enough that if I lose anything, I have backups. I have redundancy. Remember, because we... Fishermen, this is our hobby. This is something we do personally. 
Um, we don't want to waste time or money doing a lot of different things that we would otherwise not uh, be doing or can't afford to do uh, because if we lose something, we don't have a sponsor. Well, <laughs> the family budget is our sponsor. So we always want to kind of take care of things. So, uh, so if you notice, I'm heavy on plastics, light on hard baits, but anything in my tackle box can be treated like everything else. The only thing I don't do is I don't drop shot hard bait, but I can throw hard bait and small and sh and, uh, uh, soft baits pretty much the same way. Now, so that is it. Oh, I did forget one other thing. On the back end here inside my bag, I do keep and segregate a certain type of flute. This is a flute made by Strike King, a 3X soft bait because of the kind of formula it is. It's kind of almost like that Z-Man product uh, that you don't want to mix these because I, I tried in the past and these always melt onto any other bait, even if it's another soft plastic bait and the same color, they melt onto it. So I don't, I try not to, I try not to mix, it. excuse me, a little bit of a yawn there. Now, I also have some of my leader material. Um, you, you don't know this, but just trust me on this. This is 14 pound. This is, uh, I'm sorry, this, yeah, this is 15 pound. This is 14 pound, and this is 20 pound leader material. Um, if you take a look at some of my earlier, uh, some of my earlier uh, rod setups, you'll understand why I have pound test that heavy. I also am going to be putting in uh, some of my heavier material for leader material. Uh, I'm going to be putting in some of my mono, the 60 pound mono material. So that's my entire setup there for going fishing. And I hope that you've enjoyed this extended video. Remember, I do a lot of long, long videos and it's just because I want to change the format a little bit. And I, I don't expect if, if I get to a million subs, that would be perfect. That would be beautiful. But I know that that's a long way in coming. Uh, I don't know that the longer format does provide for it, but we'll see. So I want to thank you again for checking out this video. Once again, please like, subscribe, and share this video to people who you think will be interested in this kind of material just the same. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Family Budget Mission. Have a great week. And always remember, don't break your family budget. Just go out there and break your personal budget.